Welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about acute gastritis. In a very short period of time, we will discuss the etiology, the risk factors and pathophysiology of acute gastritis. Also, don't forget to test yourself with the quiz that we have at the end. Right, so let's get straight into it. Acute gastritis is a sudden temporary inflammation of the stomach epithelium, which mainly occurs due to NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Even though we can directly link NSAIDs to the pathogenesis of acute gastritis, there are many other factors which we can indirectly link to the pathogenesis of acute gastritis. Alcohol use, depression or any stress-inducing event, also immunosuppressed conditions like AIDS and severe burns. Okay, so let's discuss how NSAIDs cause acute gastritis. NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs so whenever we have any kind of inflammation we are used to taking this for example aspirin or ibuprofen right so whenever we take these NSAIDs they involve in a direct toxic effect in our body damaging the cells apart from that it indirectly causes damage to the cells as well right so we have something called prostaglandins in every tissue of our body these prostaglandins are actually derived from something called arachidonic acid and an enzyme called COX-1 enzyme in our body is involved in the conversion of arachidonic acid into prostaglandins. So prostaglandins have a lot of useful effects in our body. Prostaglandins involve in the mucin production or the mucus secretion in our stomach. Also it's responsible for maintaining the mucosal blood flow in our stomach. But what happens when we take NSAIDs is some of these NSAIDs will directly inhibit this COX-1 enzyme. So it will prevent the prostaglandin synthesis from arachidonic acid and because the synthesis of prostaglandins is decreased, the mucus secretion and the mucosal blood flow into our stomach will also be decreased. Right, let's talk a little bit about the histology of the stomach layers. Firstly, over here, we have a layer of epithelium, which lines the gastric mucosa. Below the epithelium, we have the lamina propria. The lamina propria and the epithelium both combined, we call it the mucosa. Below the mucosa, we have a muscularis mucosa or the muscularis externa, which is the layer of muscles. Finally, below the muscularis, we have a layer of submucosa, which is basically the connective tissues holding all of this together. So, there are multiple mechanisms which have evolved to protect the gastric mucosa. There's a layer of mucus over here that prevents the large food particles from directly touching the epithelium. This mucus layer is basically an unstirred layer of fluid over the epithelium that protects the mucosa. Apart from this mucin or the mucus, there's also some secretion of bicarbonate ions by surface epithelial cells. And finally, there's a rich blood supply to the gastric mucosa which efficiently buffers and removes protons. So these are the basic main mechanisms the protective mechanisms in the stomach all right acute gastritis can occur after the disruption of any of these protective mechanisms and as we just discussed before when there is less mucus being secreted and there is less mucosal blood flow this can lead to the breach in the protective mucus layer that overlies the surface epithelial cells of the stomach which means that the epithelial cells are now in direct contact with whatever the substances in the stomach it could be any caustic substance like acid, pepsin and bile. So naturally, in response to all this, inflammation occurs. Hence the name itis in gastritis. So you know what comes with inflammation. A lot of white blood cells. And if this damage is really severe, this can lead to something called erosion. Erosion means damage to the surface epithelial cells. So, if the epithelial cells are damaged, what will happen? Then whatever the substances in the stomach are now in direct contact with the layer beneath the epithelial cells, which is the lamina propria. Lamina propria is essentially a supportive connective tissue which underlies the surface epithelial cells. And connective tissues have blood vessels. So, because of this, at this stage, hemorrhage can also occur. So, we might see some bleeding. 
and that's when we call this acute hemorrhagic erosive gastropathy. This won't stop from here. Instead of staying in the mucosa, this will also penetrate further into the submucosa and that's when ulcers occur. We will speak about peptic ulcer disease in detail in one of our next videos, so stay tuned. Right, moving on. So, all this time we spoke about a foreign substance in the stomach. For example, NSAIDs which we take from outside. Apart from this, a systemic condition can also alter the pathophysiology mechanisms that work in the stomach. For example, when someone experiences severe burns. What happens during a severe burn is that due to the high heat, a lot of water will be evaporated from our body and so we will be hypovolemic. The blood volume in our body will go down, which means there isn't enough blood to transport all that oxygen. So this is kind of an emergency state in our body. So our body detects this and diverts all the remaining blood volume into the critical organs in our body to ensure survival which means less blood is being provided to the gastric mucosa. So then ultimately the gastric mucosa cells will become ischemic. Ischemic cells cannot perform their normal duties well because the protective barrier is broken down now. And that's when something called curling ulcers occur in our stomach. Ulcers which occur due to a systemic condition like that are called stress ulcers. Another thing that can happen is when there is any kind of a stressful situation, this could sometimes lead to an increased intracranial pressure in our head. This increase in the intracranial pressure directly stimulates the vagus nerve which increases the parasympathetic outflow. This is actually a very important nerve. So one effect of this vagus nerve stimulus is to increase the parietal cell activation. And you know what parietal cells do? They secrete hydrochloric acid. So the hydrochloric acid production will increase. So when more acid is being produced, this can also lead to ulcers. These ulcers are called Cushing ulcers. So both of these are examples for stress gastritis which occur in response to a physiologic stressor that affects the main function of the stomach mucosa. Actually, in reality, any situation that involves shock, sepsis or severe trauma can lead to ulceration. How do we know when we have gastritis? What are the symptoms? Acute gastritis is very often asymptomatic, which means we won't show any symptoms. But when symptoms do occur, epigastric pain is the most common complaint. And if this erosion persists for quite some time, we can notice nausea, vomiting, a burning sensation in the stomach and also loss of appetite and anorexia. Sometimes we can see signs of upper GI bleeding when it reaches the blood vessels. That's it about acute gastritis for now. Let's test yourself with just two questions. Question number one, gastritis is defined as increased acid production in stomach increased sensitivity of the stomach lining, inflammation of the stomach lining, wounds and lesions in the stomach lining. Yes, the answer is number three, inflammation of the stomach lining. Question number two. Some most common symptoms of gastritis include nausea and vomiting, pain in the upper abdomen, loss of appetite, all the above are correct. Yes, answer is 4, all the answers are correct. That's it for now, don't forget to check out our next video on chronic gastritis. See you until then.